we spoke about the Manson uh, docu series, which was absolutely tremendous. Things came out of there that we didn't know about, and which seems impossible after all these years. I know. Thank you so much for writing about that. I really appreciate it. I told it was, Angie, I was like, I think I just talked to her. Yeah, that's right. And now you're tackling a Canadian, uh, yes. Watson, who was a co-founder of Greenpeace and uh, founded the Sea Shepherd movement. Uh, you are after the truth. And in films like this, you, you have the chance to improve the world in some degree. Do you feel that you're able to do that or that is that a, a goal of yours? I think, I think through sharing other people's stories, I hope to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think, you know, to be honest, I thought, well, I, I, I'm doing a lot. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And then you meet somebody like Captain Paul Watson, who from the <laughs> moment he wakes up to the moment he goes to bed, is doing something every single minute, you know, without compromise. And you're like, okay, yeah, I'm not doing enough. <laughs> That's okay. You have permission. You have permission. Um, now he he went to to see many many years ago with uh, Bob Hunter, who was a, a TV journalist here in Toronto. Yeah, yep, sure. Stop whalers to stop shark hunters to do all of that, uh, and you know has done it. Is it 40 years ago? Yeah, Sea Shepherd was, is 42 years now. 42 yeah. years, yeah. It's incredible what he's done. And I wonder if he feels that he, with the knowledge that he's brought and the effort that he's put into it, if he has um, changed minds in governments around the world. I think in some places he absolutely has, especially in more progressive places. Um, I know that he's had um, good relationships with various people in France and even recently in Costa Rica um, once that red notice, you know, went away. And so I think, you know, but he's also uh, an easy scapegoat, you know, for someone who knows there needs to be change. And then they say, well, you know, he, he takes things into his own hands, but it's kind of different on land. There are remedies and there are laws out there in the middle of the ocean. When something's doing something illegal, there's no one to catch them um, because it's so vast and there's not enough governing entities. And so when Sea Shepherd catches them, they act. And uh, what is the percentage point? 40% of the fish that we buy is captured illegally. Yeah, it, it probably astonishing. At yeah, so an easy way to think about it is if you look down at your plate and you happen to be eating fish, there's a 40% or, or it could even be 50% chance that it was caught illegally. Um, there's also so much bycatch and um, there are just so many, uh, you know, scientists used to say that we get half of our air from the ocean and now a lot of them are saying that we get 70% of our oxygen from the ocean. Some are trending it upwards from that. So there's this vast area covering 71% of the earth that we're not giving proper attention to. So that, that's really why I made the film. Well, not giving proper attention to destroying, destroying whales, destroying um, tuna for no good reason to store them, to drive up the price for sushi. Yeah, yeah. I'm learning so much in this documentary. It's just breathtaking. Oh, thank you. It's pretty, and it's pretty insane. The, uh, he, there's a, he makes a point that property, like fish, like ballistic uh, weapons made from whale oil, property is more valuable than life. You know, it just never stops. Yeah, we're seeing, well, I mean, we're seeing that everywhere right now, you know? Yeah. Private property is more important than having clean water or clean air or clean oceans. It's, uh, it's uh, drastic times, I think. Um, and also you raise a point that, or he raises a point that extinction is good because it drives prices up. Would you explain a little bit about that? Well, extinction is never good, but perhaps something, I think what he was, uh, was trying to say there is that we're entering a period of a mass extinction. And while it might have the side effect of driving certain prices up, I, th I think what you're referring to is when they were holding the tuna. Right. Um, Japanese yeah. market, it drives up the price. But the fact that they're killing and holding it is helping to create 
extinction and, and that's not good. So I think, I, I think maybe that's the part that you were talking about there. But um, the fact that we are entering this mass extinction and scientists and all sorts of people are aware of it, but we're still in this overly capitalistic society where we're like, at any time of year and at any place, I should be able to have any type of fruit or any type of sushi, you know, that I want. You know, it's different now. There are over 7 billion people on the planet and we can't just have everything, you know, that we want when we want it. Like we have to be conscientious. You live in a society, you know, so you get your vaccines and there are certain things you do to help keep the air clean for everyone because it's not your private property, right? So I don't, I don't, ex extinction is never good. And Elizabeth Colbert and a whole bunch of people are writing now about how we're absolutely in our sixth extinction and all the signs are there and we're just going about our day and buying shoes online. Um, also, Paul Watson and his, his uh, cohorts have put their lives at risk at sea, and we see a very dramatic sequence when one of his men is between two boats trying to uh, uh, stop one while another one rams it. Now, these are volunteers who go out, and God bless them for doing that. Yeah. Making a noise. Yeah. Yeah, what you cut out there for a second. What was the last thing you said? Just that they that they they go out there and they make a noise in where no police can help them, where no government can help them in the middle of the ocean. You know, yeah. he had a tenth of their courage and Paul's. So yeah, and and it's pretty incredible. A lot of those volunteers, um, you know, some come and go, you know, because they have careers or their teachers or they do, you know, they have other jobs, but a lot of them stay a really long time. Like Peter Hammerstedt has been with Sea Shepherd since he was 18. He may have even been 17. And now, you know, he directs all of the operations worldwide and he's only in his thirties now. And he's every bit as eloquent as Paul. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to share that, that your readers might particularly like is that Paul told me, that women make the best crew members. And I said, okay, that's great, why is that? Because he's, he has female captains and has had them in the past. And he said that they're, they're, uh, they fully think about an issue and they're better team players. Whereas, you know, the men who can also be great, but they tend to act uh, more quickly, maybe without thinking of everything. And that there's usually more ego involved. And so he said some of the best crew members, he's, you know, his best, there's great guys too, don't get me wrong, but he yeah, said yeah. In, on the whole, women are better crew members. Well, there is something for your Supreme Court to think about. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, there's an absolutely breathtaking, it's animated, but it's Paul Watson managed to get around the world to safety <laughs> yes. through all these oceans without papers. I mean, the Anything. he's doing yeah when he told us that story I thought okay you know uh, how am I gonna do this because first of all I he had to say it and list all the places he went but without giving away any specifics so he wouldn't say who helped him where right you know <laughs> and so I thought oh gosh the best way we can do this is to figure out how to do a, a quirky animation and it was um, actually our um, associate producer, Pamela, who did a temporary animation for us. And what she did was so great because the boat was kind of jerking along and we left that for the final because it was Good. really- Yeah, yeah it, it, was, it was really fun. It was really yeah. fun and certainly gives you a, a good idea of what he accomplished. Yeah, and you need that visual medium because it's one thing to be like, I went here and then I went here. But then when you see, vast amount of land and ocean he traveled with no papers it's you know it's just very piratey what an adventure i hope it inspires young people to either go out and join the sea shepherd movement or to do what they can do locally and certainly to think more about the greater earth so yeah. yeah i hope so too you know it, it's it's very we're in tough times right now and a lot yeah. of times i feel like as an individual you can't do much, but I mean, you know, every time you eat, you can do something about this issue. 
And if you have more time and want to go and volunteer, a friend of mine is in um, West Africa with Sea Shepherd right now because she was inspired by the film. She's an oh, artist. Great. And she's there checking things out. And, you know, they always need um, volunteers. And, I, you know, th there's something you can do every day. If you can't take off and go volunteer, then make different choices. Eat less fish, eat no fish, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm aiming for now. So thank you so much, Leslie. Just a joy to speak to you again. Thank you, and it's good to talk to you. Thanks a lot for watching. You're welcome. See you for the next one. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Life started in the ocean. It's the lifeblood of the planet. And I said, everything I do in my life will be for them and to protect our ocean. And they punished me for having the audacity to oppose their illegal activities. Interpol has issued a red notice for echo terrorist Paul Watson. Anyone who know of his whereabouts, contact authorities. I feel that it's our moral obligation to prevent criminals from raping and plundering that this planet has for all of us. But I can't back down. This is too important. If the ocean dies, we all die. The Greenpeace approach was to hang banners, take pictures, and observe. I can't do that. If what we do involves confrontation, so be it. You have to get these problems across by whatever means necessary. I'm chasing the Ishimaru number three who's in pursuit of two whales. That's the end of the trigger. We're passengers on Spaceship Earth, and people are killing off the crew. But every time that there's an action, there's a reaction. And that's what we are. Mr. Watson, he's not welcome again. We do not cause any injury. We have never caused any injury. And you have to rock the boat. And if you're not doing that, then you're not doing your job.